Ready to break free from algorithms, vanity PR, and money-sucking ads? My name's Larissa Worstiak, and I've learned in eight years of jewelry marketing that content is the crown jewel. My agency, Joy Joya, takes a holistic approach, leading with laser-focused storytelling, impactful content creation, and strategic content distribution. This method has worked for the solopreneur as well as the multi-million dollar company. And now I'm sharing these same systems and tactics with you. Here's to standing out in the sea of sparkle. Welcome to episode 293. In today's episode, I want to discuss the importance of quality over quantity in email marketing and how to maintain a healthy subscriber list. This topic came up because I've noticed, unfortunately, a significant increase in spam subscribers on many of my clients' lists recently, and I have heard similar stories from others in the marketing community. This issue is known as list bombing, and it's described in Clavio's support documentation as a malicious attack where the attacker exploits a sign-up form or checkout page by making a large number of fake submissions, filling the associated list with emails and phone numbers that have not consented or are, are invalid. Although a rise in email subscribers, if you happen to notice that you suddenly get a lot of new subscribers, It might be exciting, it might appear beneficial for your brand at first glance, but this only holds true and should be positive if all those new subscribers are actually real, genuine, they want to be there. When you're sending emails to fake profiles, that can harm your deliverability as your emails might get caught in spam traps. You'll also see a decline in open rates and just in engagement in general because obviously those aren't real people engaging with your emails. And later in this episode, I'll dive deeper into list bombing and share ways to protect yourself against it because again, unfortunately, it is becoming a widespread issue. The main focus today is to ensure your subscribers are legitimate genuinely interested and actively engaging with your emails, regardless of whether you have 100 or 100,000 subscribers. Stay tuned for tips on achieving this with your email marketing strategy. But before we get to the solid gold, I'd like to take a moment to remind you that this podcast has both audio and video, so you can either listen on your favorite podcast platform or watch on YouTube by searching Joy Joya. You can support the podcast for free by taking the time not only to subscribe, but also to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Also, if you didn't know, I co-host another podcast called Success with Jewelry with my friend Liz Kantner, who's also a jewelry marketer and the founder of the Stay Gold Collective. We have a free version of the podcast available everywhere you listen to podcasts and on YouTube, as well as a membership community with extended episodes and additional resources. I invite you to check it out if you're hungry for more content. And in case you missed the announcement, I've got some big news. For the third time, Joy Joya is opening an incubator grant and it is officially live and waiting for your applications. We're doing things a little different this time around just to try something new and you'll want to visit jewelrybrandincubator.com to apply and get all the details. That link will be in the show notes as well. So we're giving away six months from August 1st to January 31st of free full service digital marketing support valued at $18,000 in total to one emerging jewelry brand. Last time I offered this free grant about a year ago, we had pretty strict requirements to enter. I got a lot of feedback about how that felt limiting. Guess what? We took away all those requirements and you only need to be an active jewelry business with an e-commerce presence in order to apply. Highlights of the services include access to me and a dedicated client account manager at your fingertips, six-month content calendar tailored to your brand, three comprehensive audits, including email, e-commerce, and social, comprehensive email marketing management, 
blog post writing and publishing, and a success roadmap to know exactly what you need to do to improve your jewelry business. Additionally, new this year, we're offering the following for five finalists. You get six months free of the mid-tier membership to Joy Deck. That's a $3,600 value. Again, you could go to jewelrybrandincubator.com to learn more about Joy Deck and everything that it entails. But basically, it's an all-in-one marketing support platform that provides accountability and direction, a personalized plan, confidence and assurance, real-time progress monitoring, and more. And also, if that wasn't wild enough, yes, all entrants, everyone who enters for this grant will receive three free months of an entry-level membership to Joy Deck. That's a $300 value. Entry-level Joy Deck focuses on accountability and support for your marketing. If you feel like you're on the brink of something big but need guidance to take that leap, you're in the right place. Again, go to jewelrybrandincubator.com for a whole explanation of what that is. I could spend a really long time talking about this, but I won't. You can find all the information there. So why are we doing this for free? We want to spotlight you as our best case study yet. Also, we love giving back to the industry, and we've had a lot of success with the past two grant pro programs that we've run. As I mentioned, the only requirements are that you have an active jewelry business with an e-commerce presence. And if you're already a fan of this podcast and you feel aligned with my approach to marketing, well, that's a big bonus. So visit jewelrybrandincubator.com to apply, get all the details. Applications close Friday, July 12th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, let's get into today's episode, My Sparklers. I want to talk about a pretty serious issue because it's been coming up a lot recently with my clients and just overhearing stories in the marketing community. It's all about list bombing. It's a super widespread issue, as I said, and the issue is that not enough people are aware of it, and so they're not looking out for it and seeing if this is happening to them, and by the time they notice, it is sometimes too late. So if you let list bombing go for too long without doing anything about it, it will do major damage to your list to the point that you'll have to spend months rebuilding your sender reputation in a strategic way, which is hard to do if you're DIYing your email marketing. At that point, when it's gone that far and that long, you will need to have an expert help you with that. But if you catch it early, that's great. You can do something about it immediately. And this is why it's so important to pay attention to your email marketing analytics on a regular basis, at least once a month, to see if anything fishy is happening or if you notice any unusual patterns. So you're probably wondering, why does list bombing even happen? So these spammers who just inundate your list with fake emails, what they're trying to do in some weird way that I honestly don't understand because I don't understand how spam fully works, but they're trying to trick your platform into sharing spam on their behalf. So I believe by submitting their email addresses, it kind of like legitimizes their email addresses somehow, and then they're able to send spam. But the ramifications is that it's super annoying to deal with when you have this happen, and it will harm your sender reputation as an email marketer if you don't catch it pretty much right away, as I said. The first way that you'll notice if you've been list bombed is that you have a sudden increase in subscribers. And the thing that's tricky about this is you may just feel good about that. You'll be like, wow, all my efforts to get new email subscribers seem to be paying off and you'll get really excited because often it will start slowly. Like you'll just get a few new subscribers here and there, but if it goes unnoticed for too long or you're not paying close attention, there will be a point where the list bombing starts to ramp up and gets really out of control. And so that's kind of the dangerous thing because you'll probably like feel excited 
that you have all these new subscribers. But you really need to be wary if all of a sudden you start getting a bunch of new signups on your list. And when you look at the actual email addresses, you'll see they look kind of fishy. Like one thing that I've seen is that the email addresses have like plus signs in the first part of the name randomly, like all of them will, or for some reason, everyone is coming from Japan or another country that you don't typically like sell in, or there's just something not right about the email address. Like they just look kind of strange or they're all coming from the same sender domain. And the other thing is, they'll never actually engage with the emails you are sending them because they're not real people. (laughs) And that's why your open rates and click rates will significantly go down if you suddenly have a bunch of fake people on your list. So usually what happens is with list bombing, all these people are coming through one sign up form. And it's sometimes hard to even identify where the vulnerability is. Or it'll start in one place, and then when you have that under control, they'll start coming through a different sign-up form. And from what I've seen personally, usually it's a sign-up form that's in Shopify. It's either like a contact form or some kind of pop-up. So just pay attention, and in your email marketing platform, try to identify the source of these subscribers. So what should you do if you noticed notice list bombing? First, definitely suppress or archive. The terminology is different depending on which email provider you use immediately. Like, make sure those people are not on your list. Also, try to figure out the source of the list bombing and ask yourself if that particular form, the sign-up source, is necessary or if you can add add additional security to it, like a CAPTCHA or some other kind of security measure. And then set up a segment or filter in your email marketing to identify new subscriber email addresses that match this pattern that you're noticing. Like, for example, if all of them have a plus sign in their email address name, you can set up a filter to catch all the people that enter with that specification. And... Nobody wants to hear this, but this is an important thing that I'm going to talk about in this episode. Implement double opt-in. Yes, I said it, double opt-in. So honestly, in the past, I used to, with clients, implement double opt-in on a case-by-case basis before we had to worry about things like widespread spam. But honestly, this year especially, I've been finding that it's almost become necessary with this rise of email spam. No client likes to hear that they should implement double opt-in. But here's more about it as well as my argument for it. So double opt-in is a process used in email marketing to definitely confirm that this subscriber is real and that they genuinely want to subscribe to to your email list. So here's a brief explanation of what it is, its origins, and why it's recommended. So there's this two-step process. There's the initial sign-up. So maybe that's a pop-up form on your website where it's like, hey, sign up, get 10% off your first purchase. So the person enters their email address. But then before they get that welcome email with the discount, they're going to get a confirmation link in their email inbox that says you must click to confirm your subscription. And so it's one added step that they have to click before they actually get subscribed to your email list. When did this come about? Well, the concept of double opt-in really became more prominent in the early 2000s as a response to increasing concerns about spam and data privacy back then when email marketing really started to ramp up, become more acceptable, more popular, more widespread, in more widespread use by brands, it brought about issues with unsolicited emails. This is where list bombing kind of first started. And so double opt-in was introduced as a method to ensure that only those who genuinely want to receive emails are added to the list, and then that enhances the quality of your email database and also helps you comply 
with any privacy rules and regulations in the country where you do business. Although it may seem kind of annoying as a brand to have to like go through this extra step and just hope that these email subscribers you work so hard for are actually clicking the confirmation and feeling like you're going to miss out on opportunities, in the long run, this is potentially better for your business. So you get improved list quality. So the people on there are genuinely interested. So if they're going into their email to click confirm, they definitely want to be on your list. And that means overall your email engagement rates should be better. Reduced spam complaints. That's a big issue as well. People like forget that they're subscribed to your list or maybe they subscribed on a whim. They don't remember. They start getting your emails and they start marking you as spam, which doesn't just affect that one-to-one interaction, but it can affect your reputation in total. It can damage your ability to get delivered with everyone on your list. It'll help you comply with anti-spam laws and regulations, especially in Europe. There's the GDPR, and that requires clear consent for subscribers. So if you sell in Europe, actually, this is a pretty important practice to do. You'll have more engaged subscribers again. Your email performance will be better. You'll just see better results. You'll feel more satisfied about the emails that you're sending because you'll get great engagement with them. And it just builds trust with subscribers because you're really demonstrating a commitment to privacy and respect for their consent. As you can probably guess, the implementation of double opt-in can initially reduce the number of subscribers you get, and that might be a little bit painful feeling. But if you're looking at the big picture and you're looking at the long run, it will ultimately lead to a more engaged and valuable email list. So ultimately, with this information that I gave you, you have to decide if double opt-in is right for you. But it's something that I strongly consider and recommend in this day and age. And if you don't do double opt-in, Definitely looked out for list bombing spam because you are not immune to it. You need to drop the vanity. As you've probably gleaned from this episode, a lot of email marketing successfully means dropping the vanity around how many subscribers you have and instead focus on ensuring you have subscribers that really care and love your brand and want to hear from you no matter how many those may be. And I do want to mention that besides watching out for spam, another important aspect of this process is ensuring that all your current non-spam subscribers still want to be there and still want to receive your emails and that their contact information is still correct. So to that end, I also recommend doing a re-engagement campaign about 90 days every 90 days, or even setting up an email flow or automation that gets sent automatically when someone meets the disengagement criteria. And typically, this criteria is as follows. This is super easy to set up in Klaviyo. In other email platforms, I'm sure you could do the same, but this is like how you would do it in Klaviyo. So you would say, the person can receive email marketing and they subscribed at least 90 days ago and they've received at least five emails over all time and they've opened the emails zero times in the last 90 days and they've also clicked emails zero times in the last 90 days. And then once you set up that segment and you pull up all the people who meet that criteria... Then you send an email to them asking them, one, do they still want to receive your emails? Two, do they want to update their contact information? And if they still don't engage at that point, it's time to archive or suppress those contacts so they don't weigh down your subscriber list. It might feel painful to do this, but again, in the long run, we're thinking about the long-term health of your email list, which if you compromise it, is going to be much more annoying to deal with than that five minutes of pain you have 
culling down your subscribers. So it's really, really, really important. So I want to know, how have you been a caretaker of your email subscriber list? What challenges have you had in this process? Let me know in a comment on YouTube or DM me on Instagram. I'd love to chat about it. Okay, let's get into the gold mine. This is a segment of the podcast where I get personal and share insights on entrepreneurship, mindset, success, growth, and all things business. And this week, I just want to give you a mid-June boost to stay motivated through the summer because I know I need it too. When the days get longer, the temperatures get warmer, I find myself just wanting to be outside instead of at my desk. And on top of that, the jewelry industry notoriously slows down as customers focus more on summer getaways than treating themselves to jewels unless they're buying those jewels on vacation somewhere. So how do you stay motivated? It seems almost cruel that you need to jump back into marketing in September to plan your holiday selling strategies. So if you usually experience a summer slowdown, I say try to see that as a gift. We as busy business owners rarely have time to step away from that daily grind and look at the big picture of our business and marketing strategies. We're often on autopilot, We're just trying to make it through the week, just trying to get by. And when we do get a break, we're sure as heck not looking at our strategies because we're so burned out. We just want to forget our businesses for a little bit of a time. So when we do get a break, we're so burned out that the last thing we want to think about is our strategies. We just want to escape and forget about our businesses. And I think. You deserve a break and a breather. You deserve a breath of fresh air and to put your toes in the sand. But you also deserve less stress in the fall and winter by planting some seeds now. Think of yourself as a farmer. You can't expect to harvest your winter squash if you don't take the time to plant it now. Who's going to be finding vegetables if they're not being planted. So show up for yourself, tackle some of the foundational and strategic aspects of your business now so you can reap those rewards later. And when you're done, reward yourself with a cold glass of lemonade, a trip to the beach, whatever brings you joy on a summer day. So what do you think about planting those seeds? Are you doing it? Are you working on it? Are you being that farmer? Let me know in an Instagram DM or YouTube comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Did you have any questions about today's episode? You can always email me Larissa. That's L-A-R-Y-S-S-A at joyjoya.com. If you love this podcast, please share it with a friend who'd appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe as well as leave a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're completely new to digital marketing, then you'll want to purchase and read a copy of my book, Jewelry Marketing Joy. Visit joyjoya.com slash book for more information.